Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Howler. So this is a resin kit which is made in 187th scale and it copies E100 with Krupp turret. And we have a commercial sample so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review. And we are going to open it together and see what is actually supplied in this kit and why it might be interesting for all fans of the small scale. And by the way the scale choice is quite unusual usual here because we are used to see 172nd, 148 and 135 obviously but here we have 187 and if you know why the uh, such scale was chosen write it in the comment section but here we have this box and let's open it. So first of all box size is not that big I can easily cover it with my hand. We have picture of the finished model on the box art then here is the uh, mention of the manufacturer website, of course manufacturer's address and some safety devices and that's pretty much all. So let's open it, I wonder from which side, maybe from this one. It's a side opening box and it is surprisingly heavy even though here we have small scale kit. So we have assembly manual which is printed in black and white. Then we have all parts packed into this ziplock bag and that's pretty much all. As you can see, empty box. Okay, so it's a Ziploc bag with all resin parts. Let's open it and take a look. So we are going to start with something what was right in the front. And just let me clean a bit of resin flash which was lying around. So here we have two red one piece part. And as you can see it is molded with hatches shut so you won't be able to open it. Of course the main gun is molded separately. Here we have the rear hatch which is also molded shut. And overall detailing looks I would say okay for such scale but I mean it's not really I would say something unusual because as you can see these recess panel lines are not that deep. Maybe I can show it even closer. So you will have to be careful while uh, painting this stuff because several paints, uh, paint layers and also primer layers will obviously hide these panel lines and then you have to rescribe everything once again. Here you can see it on the opposite side of the turret and here it's on the front. Okay, I don't know why but I'm as far as I remember these lines were more pronounced on the different kits. Here they are a bit more plain. Next we go on with main gun and here we have typical resin uh, I would say feature but it's nothing to be afraid of as you can see it's slightly bent but it can be easily fixed with uh, hot water and of course we have here the mantlet cover which is also molded as a one piece part but it looks funny when you have barrel like this so it's a sad tank from Germany okay next we go on with mud guards and so they are molded as a one piece parts for each side. Here you can see one for the right side obviously. And I think to separate it will be quite easy. You just need the uh, special saw and it will be quite a quick process. Next we go on with road wheels. And here we have quite an interesting design. Because this German tank has unusual suspension. There are several road wheels implemented on one side and that's why manufacturer decided to mold them as a one piece. It might speed up the assembly process but from the opposite side it will be a bit tricky to paint so be ready for that. As you can see they are nicely molded, there are no complaints about this but it might be a bit tricky to paint it, especially these rear wheels which are hidden behind these front ones. But molding or casting quality looks great. And another thing which is also unusual in my opinion is that we have tracks molded as one piece parts. So they are pre-shaped as you can see and you have to cut it here or sew it off here. And then they will be ready to use. Uh, so they look fine for a small scale as you can see even though this is a small scale kit they barely fit on my palm. and. It will be also interesting how to fit the road wheels here because they will have to be inserted inside somehow. So keep it in mind. Okay. And next we go on with another track, but I will 
I will not show it because it's obviously the same part. I would rather show the left mudguard which is also molded as a single piece part. And next another set of road wheels, again I'm not showing it. But we have suspension parts which are also pre-molded as a one piece elements. As you can see they're pre-shaped so it's just a matter of installing them on the lower hull section. And it might be a bit tricky to separate them because you have to sew it here and avoid damaging this lower surface of these parts. As you can see they're casted with slight angle. But other than that I don't see any possible issue with that. And another thing which is really funny is that we have drive sprockets and either is molded on the separate tab but note how the teeth on the drive sprockets are pre-shaped so they are molded only on one side which hints how these parts should be positioned obviously tracks will be here where we do not have any teeth and teeth will be visible only on the free side let's say but it's quite interesting and unusual I would say design especially for resin kit. Okay, and one more part is the main hull, which is molded as a large one piece part. And this is also quite surprising. I was expecting to see now two separate hulls, but as you can see, this is one piece heavy thing. And here you have to cut off somehow this resin base. It will be quite a process to do because it's a thick resin base as you can see. It's as wide as the lower section. Of course you will have to install the side mud guards. Here we have this uh, small recessed spot for the turret and engine, day, engine bay looks nice. We have even exhaust promoted as you can see rear section is more or less fully detailed and the same can be said about frontal section which is quite smooth but it was like this on the real vehicle but still it is I would say unusual design for a small scale tank and here you can see that turret fits right into the uh, main hull and makes quite a I would say quick assembly process especially if you will manage to delete all this uh, extra resin then it will be even quicker but do not forget that as far as you can see this circular top should stay in place because it will be fit here in the main hull. And maybe it will provide extra strength for the overall construction. And now we can zoom out because we also have the assembly manual. It is printed in black and white as you remember. So what do we have here? Assembly manual features short history note on the first page. We even have one photo of the uh, half assembled tank let's say. Next we go on with parts map and assembly process starts with lower hull section so as you can see you install these suspension parts and road wheels and drive sprocket and here we also have idler. The same is repeated on the opposite side and here we continue with tracks. So tracks uh, basically are I would say put onto the road wheels. Why I'm a bit confused because I see teeth on the front section not on the empty section and in my opinion it's a bit strange because from one side yes they should be visible through the tracks but from the opposite side it will be just a plain uh, drive sprocket on the um, unactive let's say side of the drive sprocket. But all this stuff will be closed with this side armor. As you can see it is installed right after the tracks. The same is repeated here on the opposite side. And next we continue with main gun here. It is just a matter of combining three parts together. As you remember our main barrel was slightly bent. And here on the rear we have last step. It's installation of the turret on the main hull. And next you have two marking options which are printed in black and white but I think it's not difficult to understand what you have to use. As you can see it's a dark yellow and here we have typical late war German camouflage. But obviously nobody stops you from using some I would say unusual markings because it's more of a what if subject so uh, definitely uh, try to think of something unusual because it might look interesting on such big tank and nobody will complain that it's unrealistic let's say. 
So this kit should be already available, you can get it on Howler website and in my opinion it might be an interesting choice for these modellers who are not afraid of resin kits and ready to build small tank and of course I will be happy to hear your opinion here in the comment section below. If you like this video don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!